Hello, everybody. Welcome to this webinar brought to you by Brusa Malaysia and managed by Live Champ. Uh, today, we are going to delve deeper into understanding corporate exercises. Okay, so this webinar is titled Corporate Exercises Mastery. That means uh, after going through this webinar, you'll be understand at least four types of corporate actions in this uh, webinar, whereby Ian will show you what are these four corporate exercises are and uh, and what are the impact to the shareholders. Before we move on, just allow a bit more time for more people to join uh, the room. So this is Shane. I'm the moderator for this session. So if you are ready to learn about corporate exercises, please type yes and type ready. And let me know. Wow. Okay. Hi. Oh, I, I see many of the familiar names. If you have never missed any of our Bursa webinars uh, for this year, okay, type me. Okay, let me know who, are, who among you are the loyal supporter. <laughs> wow, there are many. Uh. So many. Wow, looks like Shane, you are doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Yeah. Okay, thanks for joining this Corporate Exercises Mastery Webinar brought to you by Brusa Malaysia. And today we have you know, a sold out crowd and now we have uh, many of you here who are eager to learn about corporate exercises. As you know, corporate exercises are often undertaken by uh, listed companies to achieve a certain objective. And today we are going to delve deeper into uh, what are some of the corporate common corporate exercises undertaken by them and what are the impact to the shareholders. So when you understand all these corporate exercises, then you'll be able to know uh, the dilution impact and then uh, whether you should subscribe to the rights issue or not, you know. So these are the questions that uh, we will address in these corporate exercises uh, mastery. And also there are some corporate exercises which could be misleading because that involve like, you know, a change in terms of share price, whether it be in share split or be in a, a share consolidation. And today we are going to look into that. Now, disclaimer, whatever we share on this webinar is only for educational purpose. In no way that I give any recommendation to buy or sell any stocks. Uh, whatever uh, companies that we mentioned in this webinar is only for case studies. So if you decide to buy or sell any companies after this webinar, uh, that's your entire responsibility, okay? Now, allow me to introduce our speaker today. And uh, he also came last week to talk about uh, Sharia Compliant Read. And today, he is, he is here to share with us corporate exercises. Now, Ian is a content producer of kclaw.com. Uh, he has written over 100 articles on kclaw.com. He is also a regular webinar host and presenter. Now, moreover, he is the co-founder of dividendvote.com. Uh, dividend where he manufactured competent dividend investors who can build and manage their own dividend paying stock portfolio severally and independently. Now, he himself is a dividend investor. He invests primarily for dividend income uh, and he got average 4 to 8% in dividend yield every year. So, without further ado, uh, let me hand over the session to you, Ian. Hey, Shane. Hey, guys. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you so much for having me on Bursa Malaysia and uh, on this platform to actually share more about stock investing to you guys. So um, it's always an honor to be here and uh, I've actually prepared a lot of materials like usual. So let's just get into it. So let me just share my screen. So Shane and you guys, I believe you are, you are looking at my screen right now, right? Yes, we are looking at your screen. Okay, so with that, right, I'm going to give this... Uh, Keep this webinar a little bit shorter so that I can actually address um, some of your questions. So if you have any questions uh, uh, regarding corporate exercises, you can actually just put it in the Q&A box and uh, I would love to answer as many of these questions as possible. So for, yeah, this for, for those questions, right, put in Q&A, we address it later. Don't put in the chat group, okay? Put in the Q&A box, not the chat group. Exactly. Yep. So just follow what Shane has instructed and uh, we will do fine. And uh, for this webinar, we are going to talk about four different types of corporate exercise exercises. The first one will be bonus issue. The second one will be share split. The third one will be share consolidation. And the fourth one will be rights issue. Now, typically as a stock investor, 
Um, if you ask me, do I like my stock to have corporate exercises? Well, in most cases, I don't really like um, a lot of corporate exercises, lah, all right? I like things to be very smooth and simple. I like things to be um, as it is for most of the time, but sometimes um, from time to time, there are stocks that will actually exercise or they will actually implement corporate exercises. So as an investor, it's also very important for us to find out what are the impact, what will be the impact to, uh, to us as shareholders if we actually hold on to this stock, okay? So that we can make better informed decisions about our stock holdings. And with that, let's go into the first one, which is bonus issue. So what exactly is bonus issue? And okay, how about this? Can we actually do a, a, a poll here? Um, because the content overview is about bonus issue, bonus issue, share split, share consolidation, and rights issue. So just uh, I just want to get to know the audience a little bit better. How many of you guys actually come here already? Kind of like know, heard of these four terms and already kind of like have a better idea what these four terms are already. Uh, maybe you can actually type in the chat box. And Shane, maybe you can actually disclose what what will be the responses from the audience? Yes, many yes. Some say partially. Hmm. Majority many. say yes. Majority say yes. Majority say yes. Huh? Okay, so which means to say I'm going to keep this webinar a little bit shorter because this seems to be more like an introductory kind of a webinar. But over time, I, I love that you you guys will interact with me because uh, the more interaction we have, maybe the more um, in-depth the discussion that we can actually have over this uh, one hour or one and a half hours kind of webinar, okay? So uh, for the sake of the, um, for the sake of my, uh, for my own knowledge, lah, is there anyone who says no? Uh, they haven't actually heard before this, this, four, this four terms. Anyone? Yeah, yeah, there are people who say no. Okay, fine. So, which means to say the introduction is also very much uh, important. Okay, so the first one, um, I'm going to talk about bonus issue. So, let's go through this very quickly. I'm going to give you an example. So, let me just give you a scenario, which I believe that uh, for those of you who are stock investors, maybe you'll be very familiar about this, this uh, scenario. All right, so let's just... Uh, so let's just, uh, if you can, just uh, have your smartphone ready on um, at the palm of your hand so that you can do some very quick calculation, okay? So scenario, I'm going to read this out to you. So let's say on January, uh, 29 of January, 2000, on 2021, uh, Public Bank Bohat has completed its bonus issue where it issued four bonus shares for every one existing Public Bank shares uh, held by its um, existing shareholders, okay? As a result of this bonus issue, the stock price actually dropped from 20 ringgit and 95 cents a share down to 4 ringgit and 19 cents a share. So how many of you actually heard, um, are aware of this bonus issue? Say yes. And let's see, and let's see the response from the, from the audience. Are most people aware of this bonus issue by public bank? Yes, many are aware. Many are aware. Huh? Okay, so many are following the news. Lah. All right. So the question is this. So the question is, so is public bank share now cheaper at 4 ringgit and 19 cents a share on the 29th of January 2021 as compared to 20 ringgit and 95 uh, a share on the 26th of January 2021? So because of this bonus issue, right, uh, has public bank share become cheaper? So how many say yes? And how many say no? And, um, and what is the comment from you guys? So maybe Shane, you can actually disclose what would be the comment. Did public bank share become cheaper because of a bonus issue? Okay. Um, of course, most say no, and also most say same value. Most say no la. Okay, so which uh, means say, same value la. Uh, which means to say most people, most people here are quite uh quite savvy in terms of this bonus issue and the stock investing terms. So yes, okay. So some people um so some people uh you may actually heard one or two of them says, hey yes la. Uh, after this bonus issue uh, uh public bank share actually become cheaper. Whoa. It dropped from twenty nine 
twenty ninety five cents at twenty ringgit and ninety five cents a share down to four ringgit and nineteen cents. Wow, cheaper. The answer is no. Congratulations to you guys. So the value is actually more or less the same. And uh, let me just explain why. And uh, this is the mechanics of uh, bonus issue. Okay, so let me just give you an example on to actually illustrate the impact to shareholders. So let's say we have Mr. Tan. And Mr. Tan owns 10,000 shares of public bank, all right? And uh, on the 27th of January, uh, public bank stock price is at 20.95, okay? So on 29 January 2021, public bank had completed bonus issue where it issued out four bonus shares for every one existing shareholder. And thus the stock price of public bank has been adjusted down to four ringgit and 19 cents a share. So the question is this, what is the impact to shareholders? Number one, the number of shares. So before the bonus issue, Mr. Tan will, will have 10,000 shares. And after the bonus issue, what happened is that Mr. Tan right, will now be given uh, another 40,000 bonus shares because it's four bonus shares for every one existing share. So therefore he will receive 40,000 bonus shares and if you add on to his 10,000 existing shares, therefore he will have 50,000 shares, all right? So before bonus issue, 10,000 shares. After bonus issue, uh, before bonus share, 10,000 10, uh, shares. After bonus issue, 50,000 shares, okay? So that's the first impact. Now, but then if you take a look at its uh, actual, any changes in terms of uh, investment value, what we can see is that there's no change in its in his investment value or his value of holding on to public bank share. So as you can see, before the bonus issue, the amount, the, the value of his investment in public bank is 10,000 shares times 20 ringgit and 95 cents. And therefore, the value of his public bank shares is worth 209,000 ringgit and 500, 209, thousand five hundred ringgit so that is uh, that is his uh what, what i will call his uh, investment value in public bank after his bonus after the bonus issue the investment value will remain the same it will be fifty thousand shares multiplied by four ringgit and 19 cents and therefore the investment value will be two hundred and nine thousand and five hundred ringgit so there's no change in investment value the only thing changes is his number of shares and the stock price of each share, of each of his share, all right? So that is actually the impact to shareholders, okay? Now, as you can see, just now I asked the question, uh, did public bank shares become cheaper? So the answer is obviously a no, which means to say you are quite savvy, but let me just explain why the, why the value is, why the, when it comes to valuing public bank share, bonus issue uh, should not have any impact. Okay, to the, to the valuation of public bank. All right, so this will be shown on the screen. So what I've done is that I did some digging and uh, in 2020, public bank has reported uh, this amount of uh, shareholders earnings, which is 4.8 billion ringgit in uh, shareholders earnings. Not too bad, uh, as, especially in 2020 when we have COVID-19, the bank still makes $4.8 million in uh, shareholders earnings. Now, as you can see for public bank, the number of shares issued right before the bonus issue is uh, 3.88 billion shares. So this is the amount of uh, shares that they issue out before, bonus, before the bonus issue exercise. After the bonus issue exercise, um, it has been adjusted to 19.4 billion shares. Okay, so before is 3.88, 3.88 billion. After the bonus issue, it is 19.41 billion. So when it comes to its calculation of earnings per share, so before the bonus issue, um, as you can see, the earnings per share will be calculated as follows. You take 4.87 billion, you divide it by 3.88 billion shares. Therefore, the earnings per share for a public bank, uh, if let's say there's no bonus issue, it will be $1 or one ringgit and 26 cents. But after its bonus issue, you, the earnings is still the same. It's 4.8 billion. But then you have to divide it by more, more amounts of share, 
which is 19.41 billion shares. And therefore, your earnings per share after the bonus issue is now 25.1 cents. Okay, so, that, so this is the impact to the calculation of earnings per share. So this is very important because uh, when we have the earnings per share figures, then we can actually ascertain the valuation of public bank. And one of the most popular ways to value a stock is to use PE ratio. So now we are going to look at the PE ratio of public bank before and after the bonus issue. So before its bonus issue, we can see that the stock price is 20, $20, 20 ringgit and 95 cents. And uh, earnings per share 2020 is $1.25. So before the bonus issue, we take the, if you know the PE ratio, how is it calculated is like this. You take the stock price, you divide it by the earnings per share. So you take 2095, you divide it by $1.25 or $1.26. Therefore your PE ratio is 16.69. Okay, so that's your PE ratio. But after it has um, issued out the bonus issue, the public bank stock price is $4.19. The earnings per share figure has been adjusted down to 25.1 cent. So therefore, if you take four ringgit and 19 cents and you divide it by 25.1 cents, your PE ratio is still gonna be the same, which is 16.69. So which means over here, what we can say is that bonus issue by itself does not make a stock any cheaper and it does not make any stock more expensive. In terms of valuation, it's still the same. There's no change in, there's no change when it comes to its valuation. So the first myth is that if you do not know what is bonus issue, don't think that just because the stock price has been adjusted, be, adjusted down, the valuation changes. It does not change. Okay. So it's not going to make any, it's not going to make stocks cheaper or more expensive. Okay. Let's move on. So the question is this, if let's say bonus issue doesn't make a stock any cheaper or expensive, then why do stocks do bonus issue? Why do they have this, uh, why do they practice such corporate exercises? Okay, so the reasoning is this. So in Malaysia, I believe, um, so in Malaysia, uh, if you want to buy a stock, the minimum amount of stocks, all right, to buy or to sell or to transact is 100 shares. Okay, you can't buy 99 shares, you can't buy 85 shares, you can't buy 57 shares, you can't do that. The minimum, it has, the quantum must be in 100 shares. So it's like 100, 200, 300. So before the bonus issue, if you want to invest, if you're interested to invest in public bank, the price is this. The price is uh, 20 ringgit and 95 cents. You have to multiply it, you have to buy it in 100 shares. So the minimum amount of money that you need to invest is 2,095 ringgit. So that is, the, that is the capital needed for you to buy 100 shares. 2,000 ringgit and 95 cents. And 2,000 ringgit and 95, 2,095 ringgit, sorry. Uh, tongue is actually quite twisted, uh, quite twisted today. Not too sure why. Um, <clears throat> so now after the bonus issue, what happened is this. The same 100 shares still apply, but instead of paying 2,000 ringgit to buy 100 shares of public bank, now you can, now because the stock price has been adjusted downwards to, to uh, four ringgit and 19 cents. So therefore the minimum amount that you need to come up with to buy public bank shares is just 419 ringgit. So it is actually a lot more affordable for you to buy public bank shares today as compared to a time where it hasn't uh, done the bonus issue, all right? So bonus issue, makes a stock more affordable for you to buy. And because of that, of course, a lot more people can participate in, in buying and selling public bank shares. And this is one of the reasons why uh, stocks may want to do bonus issues. Okay, so far clear? Clear, right? Shay? Yes. Yes. Okay. 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 All right. So um, with that, let's just move on to the next question. 
So some of you, I believe that most of you here are actually quite well versed with this, uh, this uh, four corporate exercises. Um, so just to actually, so let me just give you uh, another question. Now. Let me just ask you a question. Uh, so what is the difference between a bonus issue and a share split? Anyone know? Uh, if you guys know, maybe you can just put it in the comment section and uh, maybe Shane can disclose to us uh, what's the difference. So there are any, comment, any comments from the floor? Let me see. Uh. Mm. Let's wait for some responses first. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for, from the responses we have got up until now, mm -hmm. most say uh, no difference or it's the same. Uh, but I think there's um, one guy says that uh, in Chang in Chang, I guess, uh, says that the power value will change. The power value will change. Yeah. Okay. So now this is actually where our our knowledge, our knowledge when it comes to uh, corporate exercises will differ. Okay. Because uh, in general, in general terms, uh, bonus issue share split. Actually, at the end of the day, is still the is the the end result seems like the same thing, like, right? But then, uh, so a lot of people kind of like think, what is the difference between the two? So here, I'm going to just explain what are the differences. There are some similarities, no doubt, but there are but there is also a difference between the two. So here, I'm also going to share with you what are the differences. Okay, and now the thing is that let's talk about, let's go through another scenario so that uh, everyone can follow. So now I'm gonna use a fictitious kind of an example. So let me just read it out to you. So presently, ABC Berhad stock price is $10 a share. Earnings per share is one ringgit. So we have two scenarios. One, the first one is on bonus issue. ABC Berhad decided, decides to do a one-to-one -one bonus issue which means it will issue out one bonus share for every one existing shares held by the shareholder. That's the first scenario. The second scenario will be ABC Berhad decides to do a one-to-one -one share split, which means they're going to split one existing share held by the shareholders into two shares. So therefore, what will be the, what will be the consequence for both scenarios? So let's take a look. So this is the impact to shareholders, as you can see. So at the end, we have two scenarios. The first one, bonus issue. The second one, share split. So after the bonus issue, the shareholder will, uh, from one share, from one existing share, it will hold two shares. And whereas when it comes to share split, it will be the same thing. Uh, initially, it holds one share. Now it holds two shares, all right? So it's still the same. Investment value, initially they have one share worth $10 each. So therefore the investment value is 10. After the bonus issue, like just now what I've explained, um, the investment value did not change. So therefore from one shares, um, the, the investment value is 10. Now he has two shares, but the investment value is still the same, which is also 10 ringgit. Same goes with share, share split. The investment value will remain at 10. Okay, there's no change in investment value, but the stock price will be adjusted. So in both cases, the bonus share, you will have $10 in investment value, but now split into two shares. So each share is now priced at five ringgit a share. And the same thing goes with share, share split, whereby you take 10, you divide by two, and therefore you have five ringgit per share. And when it comes to its earnings per share, adjusted EPS, let me just uh, do a quick, how will I say? Let me just do a quick, I would hold on. Let me just do a very quick uh, amendment. All right, so we are back here. So the adjusted earnings per share is like this. Initially, the earnings per share is one ringgit. Now, because it's it's been uh, split, now it has been like from one become two. So therefore, you have to take one ringgit, divide by two shares, and therefore the adjusted earnings per share is now 50 cents. Same goes with share split. One divided by two becomes 50 cents. So therefore PE ratio seems like the same, all right? You're gonna take $5 divided by 50 cents. And as you can see for both cases, uh, the PE ratio will remain at 10. 
which is exactly the PE ratio, just like before the bonus issue, which is 10, and also before the share split, which is also 10, okay? So in, in essence, a lot of people will say there's not much of a difference in terms of impact between bonus issue and share split. So now here's a, here's a question. How do we actually define what is the difference between the two? Some of you actually got the correct answer, but here in order to illustrate, um, I'm gonna use the annual report of 2014 to actually illustrate the difference, the difference between a bonus issue and a share split. And with that, I'm gonna look at the annual report of Aeon, Aeon Co Malaysia Bohat, which is here, which is over here. As you can see, this is the official annual report from Aeon. So why I purposely choose this stock, right? It's simply because, can you see over here? This is the number of shares for Aeon, Aeon Co. And in 2013, Aeon Co has uh, issued out 300, and 51 million shares. So this is the number of shares issued out, ordinary shares issued out by Aeon Co in 2013. And in 2014, something happened. In 2014, we can see that there is number one, a bonus issue, okay? And after that, after the bonus issue, they do a share split, okay? So which means to say the bonus issue comes first, they'll go from, they'll increase the number of shares from 351 million uh, to 702 million. And from 702 million, they do a share split. All right. So that at the end of the day, Eonco has increased its number of shares, ordinary shares issued from 351 million to 1.4, 1 point, or I would say 1,404 million shares. Okay. So the difference is this, okay? Now, bonus issue is actually issued, um, it is actually paid out of the company's retained earnings, okay? Meaning you say, let's say Aeon company, they make money, some of the money, they will pay out dividends. Some of the money, they will retain inside the company, okay? And that is called retained earnings. And over time, the retained earnings will grow. And as it grows, the company can choose um, what to do with the money. And one of the things they can choose, that they can choose, is to give out bonus shares. All right. And with that, they will take this, they will take this uh, retained earnings. They will pay you, the shareholders, bonus shares. And as a, and as a result of it, all right, you will have more money, you will have more money paid out from the retained earnings portion to the share capital. And for you as a shareholder, you will get bonus shares. So that is bonus shares. For share split, what we can see is that initially the power value is $1. A share split doesn't, doesn't it's not paid out of the company's profits, but rather it is, rather it is actually you take the, let's say for this example, Aeon Co, you take one ringgit and then you just split it into half. So therefore it's, it says here share split to 50 cents each. So it's like $1 power value becomes 50 cent power value. And therefore the, the what do you call? The cake has been cut into, the cake has been splitted or been cut into or sliced into two. So that is actually the difference between a bonus share and as well as shares share split. Now to prove my point, let me just let me just find you this. Let me just go back to the annual report, to the financial statement where I'm going to show you that where we have this. Can you see that uh, right now we are at this statement of changes in equity? Look at the thing here, retained earnings. So as you can see here. The company is profitable. So in 2013, what it does is that it pay out dividends, fine. So it can distribute the some of the earnings here as dividends to reward its shareholders. And likewise, it has also paid out dividends over here, which is fine. But over here, we can see that there is a bonus issue. So when that happens, 
they will minus off the bonus issue here and they will transfer this money into share capital. Okay, so they'll take the profits here. They will transfer it here, which is share capital. And therefore this amount here will increase. And this amount here will definitely de decrease after the bonus issue. Okay, and as you can see over here, share split is not being paid out from the company's retained earnings. Share split is just merely taking the company's power value of $1 and chop it into two, from $1 to 50 cents. So, so far, so, so far, so good, Shane. Or if there's any question regarding this, maybe you can also put this in the Q&A box. I will be yes. happy to clear that up. Yeah, I, I think uh, many are clear now, but of course, uh, I want to add on one thing because there are also people who comment on that. Yep. Uh, it's that uh, after 2016, right, Malaysia introduced the no par value regime. So after 2016, so essentially, um, there's essentially bonus issue and share speed are the same now. Uh, in the past, right, shares because of the par value, so share speed will actually uh, adjust the par value mm -hmm. to a, a, a brush, uh, proportionally mm -hmm. uh, and then the, for bonus issue of course it will be transferred from the retained earnings to the it will re reduce the retained earnings and increases the uh, share capital but after 2016 where the uh, Malaysia introduced no power value regime then uh, they uh, essentially the uh, similar right now uh, because we are catching up with other uh, different countries such as Hong Kong such as New Zealand uh, in the area of uh, no power value regime Okay, that is a well add-on. Thank you so much, Shane. And with that, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so since we know a thing or two about bonus shares and share split, so now the next question would be, okay, this one will actually explain everything, lah, all right? The, difference, the differences between, uh, how I say, bonus shares and uh, share split, like what, I've just, what I've just actually mentioned just now. So we'll just skip this slide and we'll move on to the next one, which is, what exactly is share consolidation? Now, typically, typically share consolidation, right? If you invest in some, most likely you won't find this very often, okay? But if you find this, right? Um, okay, most likely you will find this for stocks whereby the stock price, the stock price of this company is uh, very low, okay? And with that, what the stock will do, what the management will decide to do is they will do a share consolidation. So what exactly is a share consolidation? It is actually an opposite from share split, okay? So just now from this graph over here, if this is a share split, all right, so which means you take this cake over here, let's say, let's say this is the stock, one stock, and then you just chop it into two, all right? The size of the stock is still the same, the investment value is still the same, but it's just, you know, you just, cutting the pizza, you're just uh, slicing the pizza to half. So that's sh share split. But share consolidation is you take the, you take the, what do you call, the sliced pizza and then you put back together and you mix and it makes it into a complete or uh, a much more complete uh, circle. Okay, so it's a, it's a reversal from share split. So that is actually share consolidation. So let me just give you a quick example. Okay, so here's another scenario. So let me just read it out to you. Presently, ABC Berhad stock price, right? It's at five cents a share. So typically, when a company uh, does share consolidation, the stock price is usually very low, like five cents. And let's say ABC Berhad has issued out 500 million ordinary shares, and it decides to consolidate 10 existing shares into one new share. So what happens is this, okay? So let's say the market cap. So here's a formula for, for those of you who do not know what is market cap. Um, so this is the formula. So market cap is very simple. It is actually the size of the company where the formula is you take the stock price of the company, you multiply by the number of ordinary shares issued and therefore you have the size of the company. So which means you say if you have a lot of money and you want to buy up 100% of the company, that is market cap. So for ABC Berhad, the market cap is calculated as followed. You take 5 cents a share, you multiply with 500 million shares, and therefore the market cap of ABC Berhad would be 25 million ringgit. So that is before the share consolidation. 
after the share consolidation, so let's say for example, the management decides to consolidate 10 existing shares into one new share. The market cap after the share consolidation will still remain at around 25 million ringgit. But the thing is this, the stock price of ABC Berhad will be adjusted. So what happened is that the market cap will still remain at 25 million, but instead of having 500 million shares, it now has 50 million shares only because 10 consolidate, consolidate into one. So therefore the stock price right now for each of these share is now at 50 cents, okay? So now from five cents, it, it is now 50 cents. So the question is, maybe I would like to ask from the audience, why a stock may want to exercise share consolidation? And perhaps Shane, maybe you can review to us what are the responses from the floor? Sure. So anyone comment anything? Uh, we got one or two. Let me wait for more responses first. I see, okay. Because we don't actually get share consolidation a lot. All right, so uh, typically this one will happen towards more towards more likely towards all the penny stocks, uh, okay? Mm -hmm. But anyway, any uh, responses? People who comment about penny stock, there are some who say to attract investment, some to make it look more attractive. Uh, you know, some is say that to reduce shareholders, uh, to make it less volatile and to increase the price so they can have more space to drop, <laughs> <laughs> uh, to decrease the shareholding from the public. So these are some of the responses and to avoid being delisted and uh, to make it senang to goring. <laughs> okay, la, okay. So basically, um, I, I do share um, some, I do agree with some of the views actually being mentioned by Shane. All right, I don't, but of course, I don't think that uh, after you have make, after you have done the share consolidation, it doesn't make the stock easier to go ring. Right? Because I think five cents, uh, you see, the, of course, it will reduce the volatility for sure. Uh, let's put it this way. Um, before the share consolidation, you, your share price is five cents a share. Okay, so five cents, even if you move, move by, let's say it, it goes up by, by one cent to six, to six cents. All right, so five becomes six. So you gain one dollar, eh, you gain one cent. So even that one cent is like 20% gain already, right? In, in capital gain. But after the share consolidation, 50 cents, it increased to 51 cents, is just 2% gain, 2% only, okay? So I don't think um, in terms of, uh, I think it's more likely people will, more likely, right, if you want to go ring, if you want to go ring or people who are interested to go ring, maybe they'll go with uh, the five cents one, which is before the share consolidation. But rather, I believe one of the reasons why uh, companies may want to uh, do share consolidation, I agree with the fact that um, it, it, it actually avoids the stock from being delisted. That one, that one, is a, that one could be, I believe, is a, one of the valid reasons. The another one would be... Um, you take, if you make your shares from 5 cents to 50 cents, at least to say, um, it, it doesn't look like such a cheap stock, lah, uh, such a, you know, very, too, too affordable kind of stock. It, it, at least now the stock price looks more presentable lah, to investors. Then, invest, then maybe the investors are more, more attracted to actually come in and buy the stock. Uh, that one, so it's more like a, how do I say, uh, a packaging technique, lah. Okay, a, 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 a better way to actually present a company to the shareholders or to the investor community, the investment community than just having a stock price which is worth five cents. Lah. Okay, so this is actually, I believe the reason why the company may want to do share consolidation. Okay, as you, as you can see from this graph, over, this, this uh, slide over here, share consolidation is a reversal of uh, share split where it goes from making the small little shares, you gabong them or you just uh, consolidate them to make it a little bit bigger. 
And finally, now we are going to look into rights issue. So what exactly is rights issue? And this will be the more, uh, um, as compared to bonus issue, share split and share consolidation, this one will be a little bit more complex. And uh, let's get right into it. So the key thing, so now over here is that I would like to start off with uh, explaining why companies may want to do rights issue. So for a company, a public listed company, uh, there are times that they want to raise capital. And there are a few ways they can do that to raise capital. The first one is that they can, of course, uh, generate profits from their own existing business. And from there, they get operating cash flow. And from there, they can get uh, they can raise capital. That will be the best case scenario. Actually, I would love the company to raise capital this way from the customers themselves, which means company is uh, growing their sales, growing their profits. They are receiving cash from their customers and therefore they can use the cash flow received from the customers to fund their, to fund their investment uh, opportunities or to reward shareholders like me with dividends. That would be the most ideal way. But sometimes it's not that way. Sometimes a company may have, may want to pursue even greater growth. And the amount of money they raise from the customer is not enough. So what, have, so what is the next, next best option? So the next best option will be for the company to raise capital through debt. Okay. So which means they go to the bank and borrow money. So, but the problem with, uh, with going to the bank and borrow money is Number one is that they have to pay interest, okay? So they have to pay interest on top on their borrowings. So some of these companies, they may not want to do that. Some companies do that, some companies may not, okay? So let's just keep it, let's say some companies do actually, uh, you know, go to the bank and they obtain a loan from the bank to, to, so that they got the funds to invest in their, in their expansionary activities. Some may not. So if let's say they choose not to, there's also another way. And the way is to do rights issue. Okay, so rights issue. So issue, the word issue here means the issue shares. And the rights here means they will give the rights to, they will give the rights to shareholders, existing shareholders to buy, to exercise their rights, to buy the share at discounted, at discounted prices from the market value Okay, which means existing shareholders will, will get the rights to buy discounted price shares, all right, from the market value. So that uh, if, if let's say that if the investors, the existing shareholders give the money to the company, the company will receive the money and they can raise capital for their expansionary activities. Okay, so, that, so therefore over here, we have the differences between the two. Number one is that if you use rights issue, you don't need to pay interest. And when you don't need to pay interest, then of course, uh, uh, then well and final, I mean to say, there's no fixed schedule for, for you. There's no fixed schedule for you to pay interest or, the, or to actually repay the loan. You receive the money, you invest, and uh, that's well and fine, okay? But here's the thing. When you issue shares at the discounted price, what, um, what, um, shareholders may be uh, attracted to have what they're expecting could be after you, they have invested more money into their share they might expect more dividends from the growth of the company from the, from the growing profits of the company they want increasing dividends so that, so that is actually the cost of having rights issue. Whereas if they just go with the bank, you know, they borrow money from the bank, they get a loan, they pay interest. If the company actually grow in terms of their profits, it doesn't mean that the bank, or, sorry, it doesn't mean that the stock needs to pay more interest to the bank because the interest is kind of like fixed or more or less fixed by the bank. So, so that is the differences between raising capital through debt and raising capital through rights issue. And with that, let's, let's, look at, let's take a look at uh, another example. So we have Mr. Chin over here. And Mr. Chin has uh, 10,000 shares of ABC Berhad. And as you can see, the stock price is $3 a share. All right. And now here's the thing. ABC Berhad decides to raise capital via rights issue to fund its growth activities. So the company, what it does is that 
it offers shareholders the rights to subscribe ABC Berhad shares at two ringgit and 40 cents, which is a discount from the market value of uh, $3, which is 20% down. And uh, people like Mr. Chin or his fellow shareholders is limited to purchasing a total of one rights share for every existing four shares he holds. Okay, so that is a so when it comes to rights issue, there's always a limit to how many sh discounted price shares that you can actually get. All right. And in this case, it is one right shares for every four that he holds existingly. Okay. So the question is this, what is the maximum number of right shares Mr. Ching can buy? So the calculation is as followed, as you can see, one every one right shares for every four shares he holds. And uh, Mr. Chin has 10,000 shares. So therefore, the maximum amount of shares that he can buy is 2,500 shares, okay? Which means Mr. Chin has a choice. Mr. Chin has three choices, actually, I believe, three choices. The first one is that he can subscribe. He can buy, he can, he can subscribe, he can actually apply to get 2,500 shares because it's his right to actually subscribe. 2,500 shares. All right, so that, the, so that is the first one, the first choice. The second choice is he can, let's say he doesn't have enough money to, to subscribe 2,500 shares. He can actually subscribe uh, something lesser between zero to 2,500 shares. Maybe he can subscribe up to 1,000 shares if he still wants to subscribe, okay? So I believe that is the second choice that he can actually make. And the third choice is that Mr. Chin can say, I forfeit my right. I don't want to subscribe. I just want to hold on to my 10,000 shares. So these are the three choices. Or maybe there's a fourth one, which is he's not aware of this rights issue and therefore he just uh, forfeited his right or he just make the, or he just allowed the offer to lapse. Okay, and therefore he just remained uh, a shareholder with 10,000 shares of ABC Berhad. But in this case, let's say, for example, he go and subscribe. Like he go and subscribe in full, the 2,500 shares. So the maximum amount, so the additional amount of money that he needs to invest will be calculated as followed. It is 2,500 right shares multiplied by 2 ringgit and 40 cents, which is a discounted price. So therefore, in order to, to top up his investment into ABC Berhad, he will need to invest another 6,000 ringgit into the company. So that is rights issue. Okay, so what happened? What would happen to his uh, total value of his investment? So let's say he, he actually subscribed all the right shares, the 2,500 shares. So what happened is that the total value of Mr. Chin's investment in ABC Berhad now is calculated as follows, which is the original 10,000 shares multiplied by the market value, which is $3. So here we have 30,000 shares. This is the original value of uh, Mr. Chin's investment in ABC per heart. And then we have the additional investment, which is 6,000, which is calculated from 2,500 shares, the right shares, times the discounted of uh, two ringgit and 40 cents a share. So you take 30,000 plus 6,000. So now the total value after the rights issue is 36,000 ringgit. And uh, with that, if you want to adjust for the stock price after the rise issue, we will have to take the 36,000 ringgit and we have to divide it by his new amount of shares he holds after the rise issue, which is 10,000 shares plus the 2,500 right shares. So now he has 12,500 shares. So we actually need to take the 36,000 ringgit divide by 12,500 shares. So now the adjusted theoretical stock price after the stock, after the rights issue would be two ringgit and 88 cents. So that is actually the calculation. All right, so which, so typically speaking after the rights issue, the stock price right will be, will be adjusted somewhere between the market value, the rights price, the, right, the offer at rights issue, so it will be somewhere between here one, okay? It has to be somewhere between here. If not, it doesn't, most likely it will be here. If not, it doesn't make sense, okay? So that is actually the impact to shareholders. 
Now, I believe that you guys may have a lot of questions when it comes to these four corporate exercises, which is bonus share, you know, bonus issue, share, uh, share issue or share split, sorry, share consolidation, and as well as rights issue. And I'm happy, more than happy to be here to actually address them. So with that, thank you so much, Bursa Malaysia, for having me, and as well as Life Chan, Shane Chu, for having me here to present to you about these four corporate exercises. Hopefully, it's an eye-opener to you. And uh, let's get into the questions. Thank you so much, Shane, and back to you, man. All right. Thank you so much, Ian. Yeah, before we go to the Q&A, uh, if I may add on to uh, one particular comment on the share consolidation, uh, which is, you know, uh, the most common mistake that the uh, investor often make when it comes to a share consolidation is they, uh, they, they sell before the X, uh, huh? the X date. So what, what I mean, uh, for example, if you have, let's say you have 1,000 shares and the price is like 10 cents and uh, if they do like, you know, they, if they consolidate, of, uh, you know, uh, 10 shares to one. So your, your 1,000 units of share will actually become 100 units of shares and then let's say the share price is 10 cent and then it will it will actually increase it tenfold to one ringgit so a lot of investors without realizing that the uh, the, the company actually under undertaken a share consolidation will think that their share price actually last time i checked is 10 cent today is one ringgit so they actually have 1000 units so they immediately the next day they sell off 1000 units of the, of the share because suddenly they realize that the share price from 10 cent and it go up to one ringgit and then they sell off 1,000 units of them. Now, because Bursa settlement is T plus two, so before actually, before T plus two, your the shares in your portfolio is still 1,000. So actually you have to wait until, you know, if you want to sell the next day, you can only sell uh, at 100. So a lot of time people sell oversold a lot of time investors oversold believing that their you know their stock price increased tenfold it's time to take profit when they oversold and then you have to cover back your portfolio you know you have to cover back uh you know the the excess then it is it will cost you a lot of money so this is the one of the most common mistakes that people did when it comes to share consolidation that means they uh, do not realize that uh, the company has undertaken share consolidation and then their total shares uh, in the portfolio should have been shrunk, but they oversell. Ah, I see, I see. Oh, that's a very good add-on. Thank you so much, Shane. Never actually thought yeah. of it that way. La. <laughs> yeah, because the way you cover back, right, is really expensive because a lot of people think that you will go up and then they chase the price. So from one ringgit, you actually the next day you want to say it become 120. So you have to cover back the 900 ex uh, extra that you have sold. Uh. That is very cheeky, but uh, <laughs> okay, okay. I, yeah. I, I, I see where I see where this is actually coming from. Uh. You so, understand what I mean, right? I, I guess. understand, I understand. Okay. okay, cool. Yeah, thanks everybody for tuning in into this corporate exercises mastery. And uh, if you're ready, let's go to the question and answer sessions. Yep, let's do this. Okay.